Elder Gary Lee is a multifaceted individual whose life has been marked by a rich tapestry of experiences and accomplishments. His educational journey began at Conway High School in Conway, South Carolina, where he laid the foundation for his future pursuits. Post-graduation, he embarked on a path of academic and professional excellence, majoring in business at the Wall School of Business at Coastal Carolina University. In addition to his business studies, Elder Gary also earned a bachelor's degree in biblical studies from North Carolina College of Theology, reflecting his deep-rooted commitment to both secular and spiritual knowledge. He has experienced life-changing transformation through divine intervention, leading to his salvation and being filled with the Holy Spirit at Mason Temple Church of God in Christ in Conway, South Carolina. In 2005, he acknowledged and accepted his call to ministry, ultimately becoming an ordained elder in the Church of God in Christ under the Episcopal decree of the Right Reverend Johnny James Johnson. Elder Gary's commitment to his faith extends to his active involvement in the International Youth Department of the Church of God in Christ, where he serves on national, regional, and jurisdictional levels. In addition to his professional and spiritual pursuits, Elder Gary is a devoted husband to Lady Kimberly Lee, a successful entrepreneur. Together, they parent four wonderful children. Elder Gary Lee's life is a testament to his unwavering dedication to excellence in both his professional endeavors and his spiritual calling. His journey is a source of inspiration for those fortunate enough to know him and his contributions to his community and faith continue to uplift and empower those around him. Ladies and gentlemen, Evangel Nation, please welcome Elder Gary Lee. First John chapter 2 beginning at verse 9, 19, it says this. They went out from us, but they did not really belong to us. For if they had belonged to us, they would have remained with us. But their going showed that none of them belong to us. Verse 20. But you have an anointing from the Holy One. And all of you know the truth. For the next few moments, will you help me preach? And we're going to be real kojic for a second. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. neighbor. Come on, be loud with it. Say, neighbor. neighbor. They not like us. Y'all could be seated. If you don't get that reference, don't worry about it. This conference probably ain't for you. <laughs> I'm the type of preacher that, um, that believes that in order to really understand and appreciate the content, you have to understand the context. You know, it's time out for coming to church to just be, get an emotional fix. We got a whole bunch of people who have mastered the YouTube shouts and the praise breaks who have no real changes made in their life. So it's time out for that. So we got to provide context to the content. And your conference, your conference is called 214. Now, 214, that verse talks about what he was writing and who he was writing and why he was writing. But we're going to deal with the real subject matter of 1 John because I think you'll be shocked at what he was dealing with. John wrote this epistle because there was a group of people that were teaching the false gospel. False prophets and teachers weren't anything out of the ordinary, but the reason John had to write with such urgency was because he had to address these false prophets weren't strangers. No. Not only were they not strangers, but to the contrary, this false gospel was being taught by preachers that used to belong to their church. Young people, be careful. Satan will use your closest to pull you away from God. Say it again. Satan will use your closest to pull you away from God. Don't let your loyalty to friends cause you to leave God. Don't let your loyalty to friends cause you to leave God. Satan is a master deceiver. Somebody shout master deceiver. I mean, that's not an ordinary deceiver. I mean, that's somebody who has perfected the art of deception. Revelation chapter 12 verse 9 calls Satan the deceiver of the whole world. Now, this is good stuff here. Listen, a deceiver's effectiveness 
is not just their ability to manipulate information or their ability to play on emotions, but the reason they're effective is because they can do all of that while avoiding detection. I need some people who are going to pray with me today. The deceiver can only be successful at his deception or her deception if they go undetected. A deceiver hates exposure. A deceiver hates exposure. This generation, hear me, this generation has to learn how to call out the devil. We've become so comfortable with everything. We've become so tolerant with everything that we don't have anybody who will call sin, sin. And so because we have people who are able to stay under the radar, the deception keeps elevating because the only way to kill deception is exposure. Oh, y'all, I thought I was going to have more people with me than this. Tell somebody you got to expose it. Why do we have so many people walking away from church? Too many secrets. Why do we have so many young people not coming to convocation? Too many secrets. Why won't they join your ministry? Too many secrets. Why won't they take your witness? They know your secrets. Why? Because Matthew chapter 18, verse 15. Have you ever noticed that we like to handle things our way, but we rarely want to deal with them the way God told us to deal with them? We hate conflict. We got all these people talking about no more drama and I'm going to live a better life and I'm saying away from all these toxic people. But you refuse to deal with the situation the way God said deal with them. You say, I don't want toxic friends and I don't want any drama in my life. But the Bible said, Matthew chapter 18, verse 15, if your brother sins against you, go, oh, it got tight. I felt that. Whoa. <laughs> now listen, I like young adult conferences, but I got the Holy Ghost. So he'll tell on you. And it got real tight. I'm, not, I'm saying the right stuff in the right place. I know it now. Because somebody hinged up too much. Let's get it. Let's get it. Listen, the Bible says if you got an issue with somebody on your roll, whatever you was doing up here don't mean nothing to God. The Bible says if I told you right now to switch seats and there's somebody that you refuse to sit next to, leave your gift at the altar. Okay. Okay. I thought we was young and strong. How you going to be young and strong and you ain't strong enough to say I'm sorry? All right. I thought we was talking, Pastor. Am I okay? <laughs> how you going to have enough God to make you speak in a kuna matata? But you ain't got enough sorry to confess. Hey, that was jacked up what I did. I ain't really mean it that way. How your God let you speak to angels, but you can't speak to me? All right. All right. Matthew 18 and verse 15 says, if your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault. This is the part y'all want to read. Between you and him alone. You want to know how you messy? You don't know how you got a messy spirit? <laughs> It's when you got an issue with somebody and you tell everybody but the person you got an issue with. But you want to come in here and dance and shout and talk about. All right. But there's a purpose behind it. Why does God say go to them alone? Because if you're ever willing to expose the issue, you might uncover the devil. Y'all ain't want to hear. All right. So let's just deal with it. What happens is, what happens is, 
The devil will come over here and speak to you and say, Elder Ishmael been talking about you the whole service. And you ignore it for a little while. But then he go over to Elder Ishmael and say, you see, she thinks she all that with that headset on. She done had that headset. She been telling everybody when to get on stage and when to get off stage. I don't know who she thinks she is. Look over there. She looking at you right now, talking about you right now. Now, by the time the enemy finished talking to her, she look at him. He look at her. And both of them hearing lies from the enemy. Because before the devil started talking to him, neither one of them was thinking about each other. But they look at each other, playing into the trick of the enemy, and get ungodly confirmation. See, I knew he ain't like me. The Holy Ghost was going to let me know. You ain't got the Holy Ghost. You ain't got discernment. Why? Because the Bible said if you know him, you got to obey him. And all y'all had to do was to squash the beef, was actually get up, go talk to him and say, hey, we got an issue? There's something wrong here because I love you too much for there to be something. Did I do something wrong? And then she can say, no, nah, you ain't do nothing wrong. I thought you ain't like me. Girl, please, I love you. And just that quickly, what could have lasted a month was squashed in a moment. Y'all ain't talking. Get out to see. Go high five somebody and tell them I know that's right. So John said, I'm almost done. John said in verse 19, they left us, but they did not really belong to us. For if they had belonged to us, they would have remained with us. But they're going, this is the part that we don't like talking because we're so tolerant. But their going showed that none of them belonged to us. That's the Bible. Amen. Please don't miss this. If you're taking notes, this is tweetable. <laughs> Stop having remorse for people God removed. Stop having remorse for people God removed. Can I help you? Watch this. Sometimes your deliverance is their departure. Y'all ain't talking. I just wish I had two or three mature people who got one or two baby daddies to say, I know that's true. Because had the Lord let that joker stay with me, I'd be miserable right now. But he walked out and my life got better. My bills got better. My money got... Y'all ain't talking. Every divorce wasn't the devil. Y'all don't want to talk. Sometimes God will save you and let them lose track of who they thought you would be. You changed. I did. I did. Y'all don't want to. Look at somebody and tell them, here I grow again. Absolutely. The clothes I wore in elementary schools don't fit me today. And can I tell you everything I don't wear, I did not grow physically. Sometimes I outgrew that label because I have been upgraded. Y'all don't want to talk. <laughs> There's some labels I wear now that I couldn't afford before. And you ain't going to make me be mad or hate or be down about the labels I can wear now. Because God bless me. Because where was you when I was wearing Tarjay? Y'all don't, listen, I'm just, who, who in here really want to be young and strong? Young and strong people are really free. Tell Go find three people and tell them I'm getting ready to be upgraded whether you like me or not. I'm going to wear my coat. I'm going to build that house. I'm going to start that business. And I'm going to do it in front of your face. Y'all ain't. I thought y'all was a little more gangster. Y'all playing. Y'all playing. Who my real people in here who young and strong? Who the people in here who ain't trying to play church? They trying to be the church. If this building burned down, I'll meet you in the parking lot because I got to praise and I got to get it out. Okay. 
I'm almost done. I got to hurry. Y'all got The deceiver is at work. The deceiver is at work. C.S. Lewis says, the problem is not that Christianity was tried and found flawed, but that Christianity was found difficult and never tried. I'll say that again. C.S. Lewis said, the problem is not that Christianity was tried and found flawed, but that Christianity was found to be difficult and never tried. John saw the chaos that we see today coming. He warned them not to follow false teachers. Why? And John reminded them in verse 20 of what I came to tell you today. Verse 20 says, you have an anointing from the Holy One. If you ain't ashamed, find somebody and yell at them. Tell them, I'm anointed. Y'all ain't saying it like you mean it. Do me a favor, find somebody in the next section. Lock eyes with them and yell to them, I'm anointed. I need somebody with a baby daddy to find somebody else and tell them I'm still anointed. I need somebody with a messy past to look at somebody and tell them I'm anointed. I, listen, listen, y'all know Mason Temple knows I don't like cute saints. I don't like the saints that like to come to church and act like they never been nothing. This ain't even in my text, but can I tell you something? The reason your evangelism doesn't work is because you only want to show the after picture. And don't nobody just put the after picture up because the after picture don't mean nothing until you show me the before. Do me a favor, let's get free. Go find two people and tell them I done been through some things. Get up, come on, tell them I done been through some things. I done made some mistakes. I done had some heartbreak. I done been broken. I done been mad. I done messed up. If you ask me, I don't know why God loves me. Find somebody militant, shake them by the hand and tell them, but I'm so glad he did. Find somebody, I'm almost done. Tell them I'm anointed. Tell them again, tell them I'm anointed. Tell them I got a past, but I'm anointed. I made some mistakes, but I'm anointed. I done been called out, but I'm anointed. I done made some mistakes since I was saved, but I'm still anointed. And what? Somebody needs to hear, hold on. I need somebody. Do me a favor. Look at somebody. How many of you all are determined that you're going to walk out of here free? If the person sitting next to you didn't raise their hand, you ain't got to talk to them no more today. I didn't come for anybody that wanted to walk out here the same day they came in. My time is too valuable. I came here to bring an antidote to some people that have been sick. Would you do me a favor, find somebody who had their hands raised. Look them in the face and tell them, I'm anointed. What's that mean? Look them in the eye and tell them, this is what it means. This joy that I have, the world didn't give it, and the world can't take it. You didn't bless me with this. You can't take this from me. Shout in your face. I'll praise on you. I'm anointed. I'm anointed. I'm anointed for this. I'm anointed for this, and I'm almost done. Watch this. Watch this. Dallas, tell us, talk about what being anointed means. Find somebody real quick and tell them, do you know what the anointing is for? You don't understand that because in the church culture, we've made anointing synonymous with gifted. You're not anointed because people stand up when you sing. Y'all ain't talking. You're not anointed because when you play the music, people are like, oh, you sound good. No, no, that's not anointed. There's, not, there's some secular singers right now who don't even believe in Jesus. But if they came in here, that gift is so great, you be in worship like they save. <laughs> Y'all ain't talking. Because we think everybody with a, with a microphone got a message. You ain't got the Holy Ghost just because you sound good. But tell somebody, this is the anointing. 
This is why you always get excited whenever you know you're anointed. Because your anointing is never about the level you own. Your anointing is never about the level you own. If you're anointed, it means God is taking me somewhere and I got to survive the process. Y'all ain't talking. We've made anointed so churchy that every time we talk about anointed, we think it means because we got a little dance or a hoop. No. David had to be anointed because he had to deal with the bear, the lion, the soul. He had to deal with the wilderness. And God says, you're going to be king, but you ain't going to survive the process if I don't anoint it. Find somebody else and tell them, I know I'm anointed. Y'all ain't talking loud. Tell them, I know I'm anointed. This is how I know I'm anointed. I know I'm anointed because without the anointing, I would not have survived it. I would have died in it. But God kept me. He kept me. He kept me. That's why I know I'm anointed. That's why I know I'm anointed. That's why they not like us. That's why they not like us. Because they might quit, but they not like us. They might give up, but they not like us. Other young adults may smoke weed, but they not like us. Other groups may agree with fornication, but they not like us. Other groups may shout, but go home to their boo. But they not like us. Other groups may believe everything's okay. But they not like us. What do you mean? Because they might faint and walk away. But they not like us. Because my Bible says in Galatians 6 and 9. Let us not be weary in well doing. Because in due season we're going to reap. If we faint not, find somebody and tell them they not like us. They may talk about each other, but they not like us. They may get criticized and quit the ministry, but they not like us. Tell somebody that my anointing makes my pleasure in the word of God and not the will of man. Find somebody. I know y'all not coaching like this all the time, but get churchy with me for a second. Grab somebody by the hand and say, neighbor, stay connected. I heard Pastor Lockett say, this is the year of connection. Pull on your neighbor. Pull on them real good and tell them, stay connected. Why do you need to stay connected? Because when God brings me out, I'll pull you out too. When God meets my need, I'll bless you too. When God lifts me up, I'm going to lift you up. That's because I am persuaded. I'm convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor demons, nor things present, nor the future, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else shall be able to separate us. Don't y'all miss it. I started out by saying I'm persuaded, but my persuasion ain't just for me. I'm persuaded that he's not gonna win. He's not gonna beat us. Grab some money, grab them by the hand, and say, neighbor, I need you to know we gonna make it. Find somebody else and tell them we gonna make it. I know there's a whole generation walking away from ministry, but we gonna make it. Be not dismayed. Whatever betides, God will take care of you. We're standing. They're not like us. Find five people and tell them they're not like us. They're not like us. The world can say what they want to. They're not like us. Watch me praise them. Watch me get the victory. Watch me go to the next level. I'm more than a conqueror. I'm above and not beneath. 
I'm the lender and not the borrower. They not like us.